What's up everybody, I'm Salem and I may or may not be wearing Batman pants. But this new series is all about power and how to get more of it out of your engine. This is Making Power 101. Okay, how an engine makes power comes down to something that's fairly simple, but it's not really simple. There's actually a lot of complicated things that go into engine design and how it produces the power that it does. This is gonna start off fairly remedial, so if you're a tuner yourself, if you've built a lot of engines and you know a lot about these things, uh, a lot of this episode's probably not gonna be telling you anything new. But for those of you who don't already know or who need a refresher course, essentially, all of the energy that an engine produces comes more or less from energy that's already stored in the chemical bonds in gasoline. So essentially, the idea is to make more power, you need to burn more gas. Gasoline going through that chemical reaction with oxygen is what produces the power that moves the engine in the first place. So the more of that that you create, the more power you have. Sounds really simple, right? Why don't we just dump a lot of gasoline into an engine? Well, it's not quite that simple. See, gasoline only burns, only reacts efficiently, or at all actually, when mixed with oxygen, and only in certain ratios. See, fuel has to be what's called atomized. Essentially, fuel the fuel that's burning is in vapor form, not in liquid form. But before we get into all that and how complicated all of that is, the basic thing I'm trying to take away from this is, if you want more fuel, you have to have more air. So, first let's talk about air-fuel ratios for just a second. I'll try not to be too boring and I'm not going to try to get into any math here. I will leave reading material for those who want to get more in-depth down below. But, basically, the amount of air to the amount of fuel makes a big difference in how much power the engine makes because too much fuel, not enough air, the fuel doesn't have enough oxygen to, to react with, so you wind up wasting a lot there. Uh, too much air, not enough fuel, you're effectively burning all of the fuel, but there's less there to get power from. Too much air, not enough fuel is what's called lean for those who don't know. Too much fuel, not enough air is what would be considered a rich mixture. And then of course there's right in the middle around 14.7 to 1 that is referred to as storch, 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 a weird word. But anyway, so 14.7 to 1, you see a lot. Most cars are basically programmed around that number as a target to hit in idling and light cruising and stuff. And that is basically the most efficient compromise in air-fuel ratios. Um, basically decent power, but without wasting a lot of fuel. However, the optimal air-fuel mixture for power production is generally more in the 12 and a half to 13.2 ish to one category. Um, and that changes for situations and I'm not gonna get into all that right now because that's beside the point that I'm trying to make right now. Um, but basically, if you're trying to make more power in, the, in an engine, that's why you see all of these modifications and everything referring to airflow because basically if we wanna get more gas to burn in the engine, then we have to get more air in. And of course, to get more air in, we have to get more air out. The amount of air and fuel that go into and thus back out of an engine per revolution is what's referred to as the engine's displacement. I'm sure a lot of you people already know that, but I want to make sure that this is all laid as groundwork before we go any further. Displacement is determined by a complicated, kind of long, not particularly interesting looking mathematical formula, which I'm not going to describe right here, but I will also have in the description for those of you who want to check it out. But for sake of trying to keep this video quick, we're not going to get into all that. The two most important things to take away from that though is bore, which is the diameter of the piston and stroke, which is the length that the piston travels up and down. So when you're designing an engine or when you're modifying an existing engine, 
if you're trying to make more power, and thus trying to get more material through the engine, obviously a way to do that is to increase one of these two or both. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about, stroke. Stroke is how far the piston moves. Well, obviously the further the piston moves, the more air gap there is there, which then gets compressed. Therefore, you're upping the engine's displacement. The advantages to doing this are, one, of course, more displacement. Two, by in increasing stroke, you're also increasing the distance between the base of the rod and the center of the crankshaft, which gives it essen essentially the same effect that getting a longer wrench on a bolt does. It increases the mechanical advantage that the piston has over the crankshaft and thus produces more torque, which is why when you stroke an engine, you tend to get more torque. And that's gonna be most effective in the lower RPM range. You're gonna pick up more power down low. However, there are some drawbacks and there are some limitations. The drawbacks are the further that distance is, the more side load is created in the cylinder at a combustion event because the rod has to go further from vertical, which means when the piston tries to come down and the rod's trying to go this way, you're loading the opposite side of the cylinder with pressure. This increases wear. This is not a good thing. As well as the parts in the motor have a further physical distance to move. At lower RPMs, this is not a big deal, but at higher RPMs, you have to think you're taking this piece of metal and you're having to sling it quite a bit further end to end, which means it's gonna have a lot more inertia when it reaches the end of its travel. This also is why you don't see heavily stroked engines turning very high RPMs. Uh, it, it increases the likelihood of having problems in those areas. So just increasing stroke, you're gonna wind up with an engine that makes a lot of low end and is not gonna rev as high. The next thing you can do, or the next thing we're gonna talk about is bore. And bore is the diameter of the cylinder. Obviously, the larger the diameter of the cylinder, the more air and the more fuel fits in it. Now, of course, an engine block can be bored larger. You can put bigger pistons in it. That's gonna increase its displacement. It's a, actually a pretty common way to make more power in normally aspirated engines. An advantage also when you're designing an engine to having a large bore may be that you don't need as much stroke, which might make it more likely to rev higher more safely. But the third way that we're gonna talk about, if you can't get any larger bore, if you can't get any more stroke, another way you can get more air through it is to turn more RPM because the faster the engine moves, the more air it can flow through it per minute. And any way you look at it, more air equals more power. However, that's not just as simple as revving the engine higher. The higher the engine revs, the more air has to get into and out of it per minute, which means that the intake track and the exhaust tracks need to be able to flow more air which means you're gonna need different cam profiles. You're gonna need larger valves. You're gonna need heads that flow better. You're gonna need more high flow exhaust, high flow intake. So it's, it's pretty complicated. But the other, there are limitations and drawbacks to all of these. As far as trying to rev higher, and if you look at like a Formula One engine as an example, because they turn very high RPMs, and, but they make a very large amount of power for their displacement, but once you've tuned an engine and set it up to make power at a very high RPM, you're gonna wind up sacrificing drivability and power at low RPMs. In a race car that never comes down to low RPMs, this isn't a problem, but in a street car or something that you're having to drive around normally and take off from a stop on a regular basis, that's not good. Um, cars that are very heavily modified and tuned for very high RPM, performance tend to be horrible cars to drive on the street because they don't have very much bottom end and they're just generally very unhappy below a certain RPM. So obviously from an engine design standpoint for a car that you're producing to sell to people, that's not going to work. Also, if you're trying to modify a car that you're going to drive around every day, that's not going to be your best way to go. So what about bore and stroke? Why don't we just increase those, you know, infinity, 
Why don't we just put bigger and bigger bore and more and more stroke until we have the amount of power that we want? Well, you're, the limiting factors there are, for a tuner, you're gonna be limited by the block that you have. I mean, obviously you can swap engines and get larger engines with more displacement, but that's not what we're talking about in this particular example. But you're, you can only bore a cylinder so big. The metal around the cylinder needs to be a certain thickness. It's just like how if a brake rotor is too thin, it becomes extremely prone to warping and becomes susceptible to heat related cracks. You need so much metal to be able to handle the temperatures that are in that engine. So, you know, a block may not be able to be bored much larger than it is when you get it. Um, stroke is kind of the same thing. Stroke is limited by the distance that the cylinder is in the block, but then also by how much room you have to increase the stroke of the crank. Um, it, if you go much past a certain point, it's possible you're going to have interference on the inside of the block. You may have to machine the block. There may just not be enough room. Now, obviously, if you're building an engine, if you're a vehicle manufacturer, then you can put these specs wherever you want them. You can design the engine around it. But there are still limitations because if the block has to be larger to accommodate bigger bores and, and more stroke, then it means it's also going to be heavier. And weight, even though the amount of power the engine makes in addition may counteract that, weight affects cars negatively in other ways, in, in economy, in braking performance, in handling. So it's not like if you want X amount of power, you can just cram whatever size block you need to get enough bore and enough stroke to make that much power. Everything is going to have some sort of a limitation. And ultimately then, where, where do we stop? Where can we go to? Well, at some point, you're going to be revving the thing to infinity and it's going to be a race engine only and it's going to be no good for anything else. Or you're going to come up against the wall that is atmospheric pressure. Because essentially, you have a space inside an engine when the intake valve opens and you're creating a vacuum by pulling the piston down. The air coming into the cylinder from outside of the engine is being pushed in by whatever atmospheric pressure is. That's why when you're at higher altitudes where atmospheric pressure is lower, engines don't perform as well. Or I will say the same engine doesn't perform as well there as it does at sea level where there's a higher atmospheric pressure. So if you're in a situation where you're a vehicle manufacturer or you're a tuner and you're limited in engine size, you've done what you can, it flows as good as it can, and you don't want it to rev to a million bazillion RPM, then eventually that's where you're gonna to come to your limitation. You're gonna to get to the point where you can flow as much as you can, you have it tuned aggressively as you can, and it's gonna get as much air in that cylinder as it can under atmospheric pressure. So then what do you do? And that's where episode two is gonna start. Next week, we're gonna be talking about power adders. When atmospheric pressure isn't enough, you find ways to cram more oxygen in there. So if you're new to the channel or if you like this series and you want to see the rest of it, subscribe. There will be more. I have several more episodes along this line. We're going to be talking about forced induction. We're going to be talking about nitrous. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things. So subscribe, make sure you hit the notification icon down there so that you'll know when I do upload, although I do try to upload on every Tuesday and Thursday regardless. And uh, also, in additional news, while I've got you guys here, I have obtained another discount code um, for car-related clothing, which I'm gonna have links for in the description. Also, uh, get off my lawn records. I still have that discount code that will also be in the description, so check those things out. Drop me a like if you have anything you'd like me to talk about. If you think I missed something in this episode or ideas for future episodes, please let me know. Um, I will take this as far as you guys want me to take it. As much information as you'd like to hear. And uh, we'll just go from there. But for right now, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I will see you guys next week. Appreciate it.